Okay, guys. Is that not showing up that well? Is that better? Yeah. Okay, residents. Residents, very important. Uh, we've mentioned it a couple of times. We saw a little bit of residents when we did the uh, like tautomerization, yeah? Um, in the Klein book, it's a little bit in early chapter and then a lot more in later chapter. Uh, very often, residence is covered all like during the first couple of weeks. I just think it's a bit much to get in deep into residence during week one, week two. You're just dealing, learning structures, etc. We'll do a little bit. Mainly the importance of the P orbital. That's, that's kind of the basis for residence. We did a good bit of that, long periods in P orbital. Okay. Um, residence can also be called delocalized bonding or pi bonding. Uh, we'll start with neutral conjugated alkenes. Uh, conjugated diene, this is a conjugated diene. Diene means two enes. Two enes. This is also two enes, but the double bonds are not conjugated there. Uh, when we say conjugated, we're talking about p orbitals. Okay? p orbitals. Now this has two p orbitals. Well, this pi bond is also made up of two p orbitals. These are overlapping to make pi bonds shown. These are overlapping to make pi bonds shown. One electron in each, yeah? But look at between carbons two and three here. Is there any overlap between those two p orbitals? And the answer is yes. And thus, the two alkenes are interacting with each other. They're conjugated with each other. Uh, we call this four p orbitals <coughs> conjugated. Conjugated means they're all lined up like toy soldiers. All right, over here, pi bond, pi bond, pi bond, pi bond. Are these two alkenes conjugated? No, there is no overlap here because in between we have an sp3 carbon. And the sp3 carbon has no p orbital. Thus there is a break in the chain or something. There's, a, there's, there's, there's an empty space there. Two separate pi systems. The alkenes are not conjugated here. That's the terminology. Okay, these two are constitutional isomers. Same formula, different connectivity. Here the double bond is connected on, between the ends. Uh, they have different stabilities. The conjugated diene is more stable. How do we know that? One way to know that is to do look at the heats of hydrogenation. If these compounds are hydrogenated, they both go to the same molecule. They both would go just to pentane. It would require two equivalents of hydrogen, but you have two double bonds. They both go to the same spot. Which one gives off most energy? Actually, this one. Here's the number. It gives off 60 kcal per mole. This one only gives off 54. What does that tell us? This compound had more energy to begin with than this one. It has more energy, thus it's higher energy. It's less stable than this one. Why is this less stable? Because the double bonds are not conjugated. Take home message. Conjugation is a stabilizing thing. But it's almost like extra bonding here. Now, the extra bonding is not seen in the originally drawn Lewis structure. Because often our Lewis structures are not entirely informative of all the bonding that's going on. We may have some pi bonding going on, some extra pi bonding going on here that we just have to realize and understand. 
Once you start doing resonance, your Lewis structures become sort of deficient in what they're really showing you. You have to know what's going on. Um, okay, this guy over here is called accumulated diene. We may have seen it before. Uh, are these are these double bonds conjugated? Yes. They are not. We have carbon to carbon and to carbon, double bonded. So we have p orbital, p orbital, one electron each, and these are overlapping to make pi bond, for example, on the left. All right, we have also a double bond over here. P orbital here, p orbital here. But look at this middle guy. What's the hybridization of the middle carbon? It's got two regions. What's its hybridization? SP. SP. How many P orbitals does the middle one have? Two. SP has two. We learned that week one, if you didn't know it from Zinkin. Two. How is the other one oriented to this first one? Perpendicular or orthogonal. That is, it's coming out of the board like this. It's hard to draw. I'm going to try to draw it like, like this. Okay. Well, this one is overlapping here, but it's also coming out of the board. And what you have here is you have this one is like this. Okay. But then the middle carbon has one like that. And this carbon is also like this. So this double bond is like this, and that double bond is like that. And they're not interacting with each other. It's two separate double bonds. Uh, it's not conjugated. That's a good structural consideration here in understanding how these are oriented. Two alkenes are, are perpendicular to each other, not conjugated. So I'm just curious, how would you draw that as a line structure? As a what? A line structure. Line structure? Oh, you mean without drawing the carbons? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, it's a good question. A lot of times when you see these drawn, they don't have this little dot there. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's a good thing. Otherwise, it may look just like a long double yeah. line. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good question. Uh, and then, you know, maybe something else. Or... Are those more unstable than a new that first um, one? I'm not really saying anything about their stability, and I'd have to think. Uh, it's, it's probably, it's very similar to this. It's two alkenes that are not conjugated. Just because they're close together doesn't make it much different than them being kind of far apart. Um, but I don't know all the chemistry of uh, accumulated dienes. I think those are also called allenes, maybe. Um, okay, benzene. This is your six-membered ring with three pi bonds. It's fully conjugated <coughs> cyclic system. That is the definition of aromatic because each carbon has a p orbital. You can see that from just seeing the pi bonds. One, two, three, four. Uh, all the way around are p orbitals. Fully conjugated cyclic system is aromatic. Benzene is the most classical, most common. You'll look at those in more detail in organic too. But you should realize here that it's a fully conjugated system. Again, when we say conjugated, we're not talking about how many electrons are there. We're talking about just the p orbitals. Now, yes, there's also six electrons there. But that the important thing is just p orbitals. They could be empty. Maybe they contain a long pair. Conjugation refers just p orbitals lining up. I mean, electrons would be a second consideration. Okay, showing resonance structures. Actually, at the beginning, it's a little bit 
it's a touch tough to show resonance structures of such, but we'll start here anyway because it is a neutral conjugated alkene, right? We're under Roman numeral one. Um, typically when you show resonance structures, uh, looking at polarity and let, letting that be your guide is helpful. Moving the electrons the right way in terms of polarity. Problem is here, this really doesn't have any polarity, so you don't have any kind of intuitive guide. Um, but we can still show resonance structures, it'll become more intuitive as we go along. Uh, showing resonance structures is moving your electrons using your mechanism arrows. Uh, and I'm just going to do it, we can just look at it. Uh, we can move these two here. What does this mean? What does that arrow mean to you? I should now have what? What's now in the end? A lone pair. pair. Okay. I just moved high electrons. This is a resonance structure. Definition of a resonance structure. It's just an alternative structure where all you've shown is, all you've moved is electrons. Typically pi electrons. That'll probably be defined somewhere. That's what we're doing. Because if you ever move atoms, you're, you're showing a different structure. Resonance structure is it's the same structure, you're just showing the electrons a little bit. Just like the same person. Okay? If you, if you ask me to hold my hand up, am I a different person now? No. What if I put my leg out? Different person? No. You could draw the same person a variety of ways on the board. It's still only one person, though. It's one compound. We'll talk more about it. Using your, this is very important, using your mechanism arrows. Keeps you organized and everything should come from this. Charges. Anything charged now? This is minus. How many H's on this end carbon? Same numbers there, because guess what? We ain't gonna move no atoms. Two, thus, what's the charge? So important, you gotta know where your H's are and you gotta be able to determine charges. So hopefully we've been working on that since day one. Is there a charge here? How many H's there? Only one. What's the charge? Yes, positive. Of course, we're dealing with a neutral molecule. Here it is. If I move my hand from here to here, am I all of a sudden got a charge? I should not. I mean, no. Uh, on the very back here, we have uh, the golden rules of resonance. Is that, is that what's in the back? Other than Charlie Brown? Golden rules of resonance. Probably the first or second one is charge must always be the same. Net charge. What's the net charge of this molecule? Yeah. Zero. Neutral. All resonance structures better also be net neutral. You don't just create charge. If you do, you have a new compound. We're not making new compounds. We're just showing different representations of the same compound. Uh, okay. Practice moving arrows. Here we go. What are, what if we took this and moved that there? What might that mean? This is the old windshield wiper. Okay? I got pi bond. Instead, I'm going to go make pi bond over here. All right, we'll do this more. This arrow gives boom, boom, boom. A double bond here. We didn't do anything over there. I just took this and moved the pi bond over there. Ah, better be net neutral, right? Where's the positive at? On the end here, yeah? Now, I'm sort of moving all the electrons to the right end. You see how they all move down here and left this end positive? Does that make sense, or would they more have preferred to go this to the left end? The answer is, 
really doesn't matter here because we have no polarity built in. That's what I said at the beginning. I could have did all of this the other way. Um, let's see. Could we draw something else here? I'm going to draw something kind of real ugly. What if I took the pi bond and moved it here? What would that give? Boom, boom, boom. I didn't do anything there, so that should be the same. I didn't do anything there, so that should be the same. What's now on this carbon? A lone pair. A lone pair. All right. Charge is now of this carbon. Negative. Negative. Plus. That's a resonance structure. But it's pretty bad. Let's talk about stability of these. What's the most stable structure on the board? The first one. The original. Why? No charge separation. Separating charges is, is not as good. That's why if you were ever asked to show this compound or anybody, you would probably show it like this. On day one, when we were drawing Lewis structures, we would have, if we had started with something like that, would we have tried to end up with this? Probably would have. Because right here, no octet. On day one, if we want to get this in octet, what would we have done? Ask this guy to share, move these in. We could have, okay. We're kind of going the other way. These, these have two charges. It's pretty, it's getting bad. Now we have four charges. So while this is a resonant structure, I call this a bad one. Um, okay, let's look at some theory. Uh, first, let's look at this. How many p orbitals have we dealing with in this compound? Four p orbitals. Yeah? How many pi electrons in this compound? Yes, four pi electrons. We did a lot of that in we'll test one, right? Test one? Lots of questions about how many pi electrons? Yes. Okay. Every carbon has a p orbital. Does everybody agree? All right. They're all conjugated. When they're all conjugated, it really becomes one system. And we can talk about molecular orbitals, but we're not going to go quite that far. One system. Four p orbitals. Four pi electrons. All right? One system. Put the four electrons in there any way you'd like. Let me just show you this. What if I put them in there like this? What if I put one here, one there, and I'm not going to put any here, and put two there? That's putting four in there that way. <clears throat> and this is actually up there. Which one of these is that? Uh, the second one. Yeah, the second, one. second one. One electron, one electron. This looks like it would make pi bond, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got pi bond. <laughs> what do we have here? Empty p orbital. And then what do we have here? LP. Yeah? Do I have that up there already? Right there. All right? And that's really what your resonance structures are. It's your pi system with the electrons in real life, they're just in there. What's the best way for them to be in here? The best way would be to have like this and have pi bond, pi bond. And that's that. That's that. 
But that's ultimately what all your resonance structures are. The one on the end, that's where we put two here. <coughs> and what? And two there? And we drew the structure on the end. The question is, what's the best way to put the electrons in here? And the answer is this here. But some of the other ways could be possibilities. Um, it's a tough beginning. This, this is a tough molecule to look at, again, because you don't have any really thing to go on. Uh, this driving. Comment on resonance hybrids. Uh, one comment right here. Let's do this. <coughs> Bond links. Um, let's do this here. Let's talk about BO. You ever talk about BO? It stinks. What's the bond order here? Bond order means ultimately how many bonds are there? How many bonds here? Two. Two? Okay. How many bonds here? One. One? So we would say the bond order is two, the bond order is one. Mm -hmm. But is it really? Bond order between here is greater than one. It's like one and a half, right? Because of the residue. Well, it, it all depends on. Uh, again, we'll we'll look at this more, but just introducing the idea. But is there's some bonding in here? Isn't there some pi bonding between one and two? I think we already showed that, right? Up there. Um, is this a full double bond? You would get that answer from looking at your resonance structures. Double bond. But look at here, it's single here. And so it has some single bond contribution. And so it's less than double. Because in some cases it's single. We'll do some more of that. Let's move down below because it's easier to work with, for example, cations. A little bit easier. Cations. We'll discuss some of the same things up there. Resonance structure here. We've got this carbocation. Okay, how do you stabilize cations? Do you move electrons towards the cation or away? Towards. Towards. That's this, right? Many times I see you guys want to move electrons away. How does that stabilize a cation? It does not. <coughs> Okay. Can we move electrons towards this? Yes. We can do the old windshield wiper. We can move these over here. All right. Move windshield wiper. What does that give? It's another cation. It should give another cation because we're drawing resonance structures of a cation. Yeah. And all resonance structures have the same charge. So yes, it should be another cation. But how is it? It's not any more stable than that. Uh, that's a good assessment, <laughs> but it's still it's still different. It is different. <laughs> uh, what's it going to be? Going to be that? Okay. Yes, same charge. Uh, this is a little bit okay. Let's talk about this. Well, good. Which one is more favorable? Up here, the more favorable one was the one with no charges. Here, which is more favorable? They're actually equal. Equal. Uh, equal contributors.
Um, with resonance, now this is where we can look at uh, what's the true structure. Whenever you do resonance, the true structure is a blend of all your possible resonance structures. See up here when I'm blending them, that's why I said it's not just that. But these also contribute to the true structure. And since these have some single bond character between the first and second carbon, that means the true structure has some single bond character as opposed to double bond character. And the more single bond character you have, it's reducing the overall from pure double to less than double. What does the blend here look like? We can do this by saying, okay, here we have single bond between carbons one, two, and three, but here we have double. What's the blend of single and double? One and a half. It's one and a half here because it's an exact blend of two exact things. And so we have a bond and a half between one and two. So the what's the bond order between one and two? 1.5, exactly. Because it's a perfect blend. Single and double, blended. What's the bond order between two and three? What's the exact blend of a double and a single? 1.5. Bond order between both carbons is the same, really. What's the charge of carbon one? Well, it's a blend of all your resonance structures. What's a, what's a blend of plus one and neutral? Plus point five. It's like a ha partial half. We're never going to define what. <coughs> We're just going to say it's partial plus. That's a partial plus. How about here? What do we want to put here? Also partial plus. What's the full charge of this guy? Plus one. Full charge of this guy? Plus one. Full charge of this? Plus one. Okay? This is called your resonance hybrid. This is your true structure. If we could look at this carbocation, and see the electrons, everything would look like this. It'd be very symmetrical. As opposed to seeing a double bond here, here. Is the cation just on carbon one? No. The cation is on both carbons. It's, it's a little bit of partial positive on each carbon. So we have charge delocalized. which is a stabilizing thing. This is where we also have like the colors. The true structure is pink. But pink is hard to show because we got these partial bonds and they're hard to work with in mechanisms and stuff. And so we sort of prefer to almost work with these. These are fake. This is like red and white. And I have to show you red and white, and then I have to say, the true structure is sort of in between. Can you imagine <laughs> between red and white? What is that, kind of like pink? It's hard to show pink. The pink is the true structure of this molecule. Now when you look at pink, does it go from red and white back and forth? Red, red? No, resonance is actually kind of a faulty name because it sounds like it's resonating back and forth, back and forth. No. It doesn't go back and forth. These are fake. This, the structure is this. It doesn't go back and forth between anything. It's pink. Uh, resonance, we just sort of build. This, this is good for this point. What else can we say here? Um, we'll keep going. Resonance structures. 
By the way, how many P orbitals in this cation, in this structure? Three P orbitals? Yeah, one, two, three. That is, if we drew it, we have P orbital, P orbital, P orbital. How many pi electrons in the system? Two pi electrons, right? Here's your system. Put the two in there. We can put one here, one here, and leave that empty. <coughs> well, that would be this, right? Pi bond and empty. We can put one here, and one there, and leave that one empty. That would be that one. We can also do this. What if we put one here, one there, and that one empty? That would be this. A diradical. What's the charge of this? Neutral. Neutral. And this would be positive. Here's a, that's a resonance structure. But it's a very bad one. You're creating the diradical. So we probably wouldn't show this. Usually when you show resonance structures, you want to show ones that are kind of good and, and um, reasonable. We'll talk more about it as we go along. Have a good day, guys.